In the beginning, God created everything. He formed people in His very own image. But then, we turned away from God. Sin entered the world, like a dark stain. Still, God loved us so deeply that He made a plan to rescue us. At just the right moment, God sent His very own Son, Jesus, to live among us. Jesus healed hearts and minds and bodies. Thousands gathered to hear Him teach. Instead of giving lots of new rules, Jesus turned things upside down by making it simple. Love God, love others. After three years of traveling and teaching, Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. Huge crowds gathered to welcome him. But while the crowds cheered for Jesus, the religious leaders made plans to arrest him. He was turning their world upside down, and they wanted him gone. As Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his friends, he told them that he would be leaving, but would return. His friends didn't understand. That night, one of Jesus' followers, Judas, led soldiers to arrest him. The religious leaders gave Jesus a fake trial and then sent him to Pilate, the Roman governor, who could have him killed. Pilate found Jesus had broken no law and tried to release him. But a mob called for Jesus to be killed. Pilate gave in and handed Jesus over to the Roman soldiers. Jesus was forced to carry the heavy beams of his own wooden cross. On a hill called Golgotha, the soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the rough wood. The soldiers and people who passed by laughed and mocked him. But from the cross, Jesus asked God to forgive them. Finally, Jesus called out, it is finished. Then he died. The earth shook. Rocks split open. Even the soldiers cried, surely he was the son of God. One of Jesus' followers took his body and placed it in a tomb cut from the rock. A huge stone blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends were devastated. They had believed that Jesus was the one God promised, the one who would rescue them, but now he was gone. Their whole world had turned upside down. Jesus' friends stayed hidden in fear for three days, but early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, a close friend of Jesus, hurried to the tomb. She planned to anoint Jesus' body with special spices. As Mary neared the tomb, she saw the stone had been rolled away. The tomb was empty. Mary turned to see a man standing near. She didn't recognize him until he said, Mary, it was Jesus, alive. Jesus told her, do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Jesus, God's Son, became like us to lay down his life. Through God's power, he defeated death for all of us, and sin was washed away. One day, he's promised to return, so we can live with him forever. Well, that was a fun video, but there was a lot going on. So I wanted to follow it up and make sure you got a couple key points, boys and girls. First, um, Jesus conquered death. Did you guys catch that? He really died on the cross and they put him in the tomb. He was really dead. But then, but then something happened and it wasn't a prank and it wasn't a magic trick. It was real. And it's like everything in scripture, all the promises in scripture that we've read about, they all led up to that moment where Jesus sat up, he's in the tomb really dead, but then he sits up and he folds up his, um, his bindings and he walks himself right on out of that grave. He did. 
and it changes everything. He turned everything upside down. See, Jesus came to be our Savior, and He conquered death, and He conquered sin. And He did that for you, and for me, and for our families, and for everyone everywhere, for all time. And this is the good news that we're celebrating today. Jesus came to be our Savior. Because He rose from the dead, we can have hope in Him. A hope that is real. A hope that isn't dependent on what's happening around us. And um, I just want you to remember that for always, boys and girls. No matter what, we can have hope in Jesus.